All right, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we're going to show you how to model one of these popular pass-through fidget cone toys in Onshape. So th these have been floating around for a while. There's a lot of different shapes, a lot of different ways you can do this stuff. I'm just going to follow a, an example I found online, give you the basics, show you that you can customize it if you want. Okay. These are really cool toys. The, you see in the animation it looks like they shouldn't be able to move through each other but they do whether it's upside down or, or not as long as you um, use the right kind of logic when you're designing it and make sure the clearances are correct it should work out just fine so this is the model I found on Onshape and I'm going to show you how it was made first and then I'm going to step through it and make one from scratch so you can follow along so this is an assembly, it's made of two parts. Part one is kind of the base, and it looks like this. I'm just gonna run through the logic of it real fast. So, it starts with a sketch down here, it's a circle, and then another sketch is placed above that, up in space, so they're not in the same piece of paper, one is higher than the other. And what's done is an extrusion called a loft between the two sketches. So rather than extrusion making a solid cylinder, like it would normally, a loft is gonna turn this into a cone, but you have to have two different sketches to use a loft. And then we're gonna wrap a spiral pattern around it, All right? And then we're gonna put a sketch down that has our design on the bottom. We have to come up with the design, that's probably the the most time-consuming part of this project. And then we're going to wrap our design around the spiral. And that's kind of where the coolness of the spiral, of the, you know, the, the neat pattern design comes from. So the design you create is going to get spun around the spiral that you put on the cylinder cone. And it's done using a remove extrusion so we're actually going to cut out from that cone we created before and then there's just some odds and ends to do you see how the tips of this part right here are really sharp uh, aside from being sharp and maybe pointy and hurt people that's not going to print well so we end up uh, cutting off the tips to kind of blunt them a little bit they'll print better that way okay. but we also round over the bottom okay. so that's how the first part is made the second part is actually made by kind of copying the first part, using it as a reference. That way all your measurements line up. Right. And same as before, get a sketch. Right. That sketch is referencing the design you made in the previous part, but it's an offset. So it's going to be ever so slightly smaller than the other one. Because if we, if we made them the exact same size, they wouldn't pass through each other really well. There'd be a lot of friction between the two pieces. Uh, after that, we're gonna loft our cone again. Uh, and because our cone doesn't go all the way to the top, we're essentially gonna recreate the top of the cone, loft up to that, and then we're gonna extrude. Now, this has to do with the surface, surface extrusion. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, we're gonna create a split we're gonna do the same thing. Get our helix going. That's our spiral pattern. Right. Kind of following the same logic, just in a different order. So there's our design that we kind of reference and offset from earlier, spiraled around our helix. You notice this is now a separate part. That's why it's gray. It's a different color. So there's two parts here. We're gonna extend that up so it has to be done again. And then we have a Boolean operation called an intersect which on shape can look at the two things that exist here, right? There's the spiral bit and there's the cone bit and an intersect will keep only the bits where there was nothing, where, where, where there was uh, you know, the no overlap, right? So to look at that again, right? So the gray part doesn't get kept. The blue part doesn't necessarily get kept. It kind of like, taking one out of the other is kind of what happened, right? So we're left with this bit. 
And same as before, we're going to round over the top, and then this piece should pass through perfectly into the other piece. Right? And if we check here in all shape in the assembly, we say look for interference. Hopefully, there is no interference, right? That means that these two pieces do not overlap inside. All right? So that's the basic idea of what we're doing here. And now I'm going to go ahead and start doing it, right? All right, so first up, I'm going to go ahead and make a new Part Studio tab here. Let's kind of start fresh. I'm going to put a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to turn off the top plane, front plane, right plane. I'm going to look at this all from the top plane. I'm going to draw a circle centered on the origin and dimension that circle to have a diameter of 40 millimeters. Now, you can type in the mm. I know we usually work in inches, so you don't have to type anything in. But in this case, you either have to type in the mm or you can go up to document, or I'm sorry, workspace units. And you can change it from inch to millimeter, and that way you don't have to type in the mm anymore. But the example that I am copying from did everything in millimeters, so I'm just going to copy them and do it in millimeters. All right. All right. So I got my cir circle sketch that's going to make up the base of the cone. Now to make the second sketch, I need to put a plane up in space. I'm going to offset it from the top plane at a distance of 90 millimeters. Okay. So I went to the plane button over here. Plane's the top option. Uh, the default plane setting is offset. That's what I wanted. I had to click on top to tell it to offset from the top. I had to type in the distance of 90 millimeters. So now there's a plane hovering in space. A plane is not a sketch. Okay? A plane is just a place where you could put a sketch. So click on the plane, click sketch. There is now a sketch on the plane. Look at it from the top. Draw another circle centered at the origin. This circle will have a dimension, I'm sorry, a diameter of 10 millimeters. Okay. Now I have my two sketches, my two circles. And I am going to uh, loft between them. So here's my loft button in my solid model toolbar. There's extrude, there's revolve, there's sweep, and then there's loft. Loft from one sketch up to the other sketch. And that makes my cone. All right. Looks pretty good. And the next step won't really make a lot of sense as to why we're doing it, but we are going to extrude the base circle with a surface. So make sure it's on the surface option. And the height should go all the way up, 90 millimeters, all the way up like that. Okay. The reason for that is so that when we put our spiral on, the spiral stays constant. If we just use the cone, the spiral is going to uh, get smaller, obviously, as it gets closer to the top of the cone. We don't want that. So, in the same menu, I found the plane. I hit the down arrow. I'm going to go find helix. Helix is a fancy word for a spiral. I'm going to put a helix on that cylinder surface. The only thing I need to change here is target revolutions. It should be one. That should do that for uh, for the helix. Uh, one thing we can do just to make things a little bit easier to see, notice how we now have a part and a surface and a curve. The surface is that cylinder, and it's blocking our view of the cone, so I'm just going to hit the eyeball and turn that surface off. Now I can still see my spiral. Now, next step is to put a sketch on the base down here. Okay, so I'm going to make the design on the base of the part, and it's really important, uh, not that you do everything exactly the way I do, but that you create the references and do the mirror bits in order to create the symmetry. So if we look back at the original, that's my test version, the original, you notice, has all these spoons. That's what I'm calling them. The shape looks like a spoon. Uh, and that spoon is mirrored over to here, and then mirrored over to here, and then mirrored over to here, and then mirrored over to here, and mirrored over here. So this shape has radial symmetry. If you take this whole shape and rotate it 60 degrees, you get the exact same shape. And no matter what design you come up with, it has to have radial symmetry for this pass-through to work. 
If it doesn't have symmetry, it will only work in one specific orientation, and it's not going to be all that much fun. So, first thing I got to do, not even thinking about my design, I'm putting a sketch on the base there. Okay? I'm going to draw a circle centered at the origin. Doesn't matter how big the circle is. I'm going to draw some lines. These lines are going to help me with that symmetry, with the radial symmetry. So the first line I drew was vertical. Make sure it goes to the origin. Next line I drew, and I'm using the on shape kind of assistant snap. The next line to be horizontal, goes to the origin. Now I'm going to draw a line here. Now, that does not go through the origin. So I'm going to use a coincident constraint right at the top of the toolbar and force it to go through the origin. Also going to dimension it away from the vertical line by 30 degrees. Okay. Do that again with another line. Same thing, coincident to the origin and dimension. 30 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe I can start my uh, my design now. Might need to add in more lines in a second, but we'll see. I'm going to draw my design using something called a spline. A spline is a curvy line that's controlled by points. So, click on spline. What I probably should have done is do that real fast. I'm going to extend this line because this is going to be the starting point. So I'm, my spline is going to start there. And when I click for a spline, I can control where the curve goes. And to end it, I just double click. Okay, so my spline is fixable, right? I can move this point, this point, I can tweak my design however I want. You can even add in more points. The start point and end point you can uh, grab these tangent handles if you wanted to, move those around. Yeah. But I'm going to start with that as my design. Now I'm going to mirror, so I click the mirror button. It says select mirror line. I'm going to use the vertical line that I drew first. It says select entities to be mirrored. I'm going to click on what I just drew with the spline. Now, I'm going to do it again. Select mirror line. I'm going to use the second, the diagonal line I drew here. Click to be mirrored. There you go. And I'm going to keep doing that. Now see, this is what I was afraid of. I forgot some lines in here. So let's see if I can do this the other way. i go this way. That one. Now can I now flip over the horizontal all of these pieces? I can. I'm still missing some. Right? So yeah, I need to draw in one more uh, line. That should work. I'm going to mirror over that line, this piece, and then one more. Right? You can just do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Like that. So. Now, the design is all linked, which means if I make a change, it changes everywhere. That's great. It'll make our lives super easy. Uh, and also, where the spine started and stopped up here, I don't really. I want it to be flatter. I want it to be tangent. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can use a tangent constraint. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, there you go. Worked perfectly. Unfortunately, did it copy? Yeah, I guess it did. Good. So that's what. That's my design. I'm going to use that. Right. And now I have to kind of extrude this up along the spiral. So this means I got to do something. I can't use a regular extrude. That would just go straight up. I have to use a sweep as a remove. What do you want to sweep? I want to sweep that thing I just drew. Now you got to be careful. I don't want to pick segments of the circle or something like that. Right? I want to pick the design. So try to get your mouse cursor on the outer perimeter of the design. So the whole thing highlights. 
and then it'll ask for Sweet Path. And you actually have to click on the box where it says Sweet Path. And then pick the helix. Then we got to click on the helix. There we go. And look at that. There's my uh, first part. Right? Not 100% finished, but almost there. Okay, so a couple of tweaks we're going to make here. I noticed I did something wrong. Uh, go back to the sketch where we drew our design and look at it from the bottom. Everything that's not the spline, right, we're going to click on it. So that line and the circle, right? And these lines, I'm selecting them. I want them to stay highlighted. Once I've selected all those so they're you know, highlighted with the orange, I'm going to go up here to the menu and hit Construction. That'll turn them into dotted lines. That'll help. Uh, this way, when I go to my uh, sweep, it, what happened before was I selected the wrong part, the, the wrong, wrong bit of the sketch. And I want to click on the inside of this. I, I missed, because right, there were so many lines, so many things going on. I'm going to click on the inside of that. So it's hollowing it out from the center. Remove uh, all the way out the top. There we go. That looks much better. I thought something looked funky before. And now we're at the part where, as I mentioned at the start, there are these sharp tips up here. So I'm going to create another uh, plane. Sorry, now it looks like a helix button. Going in here, going to plane, offset from the top. This time, the model I found was copying 86. I don't know if that's a specific number. All right, you look on mine. I guess that's enough to cut off. It's cutting up. It's going to cut off the tips. So that's fine. And I'm going to do something called a split. So this is in the toolbar near the Boolean. It's a split. What do you want to split? I want to split part number one. So I'm clicking on part number one in the browser. What are you splitting it with? I am splitting it with plane number two. Okay. And what that does is create a bunch of parts. You see down here in my browser, I got like seven parts now. What I want to do now is delete those extra parts. Okay. So delete part is this button over here. What do you want to delete? I want to delete part two. And just click on all these. They'll get deleted as you click on them. You really just want to be left with part one. Uh-oh, I missed. Clicked on something wrong. Here we're going to verify you should be able to see if you zoom in. Okay, so I want to get rid of part one. There we go. I want to be left with that part. Okay. And turn my plane off. Okay. So that is the first uh, part of the build, right? And if at any point, if I wanted to, I can go back to the sketch three and change my design if I really felt like it. Okay. But that's it for part one. All right, folks, this is the final part of the spiral fidget cone tutorial. So at this point, we've made our kind of base piece, um, and we've done everything we need to do to create the hollowed out cone. Now we're going to create the second piece. This is going to be done in a separate part studio, so make sure you have an empty blank part studio. If you don't have one, you hit the plus sign, say create part studio right, to make a new tab. And the critical step here is we're going to use something called a derive, which means we're kind of referencing the part we just created. That way we don't start over from scratch and any dimensions, if anything ever got changed, we change it here and it will automatically update and change in the new one. Okay. So to create a derive, this button default looks like the plane button, right? But it's got a menu, it's got a lot of stuff in it. And it's where we found our helix from before. Down near the bottom is derived. Okay? And derived is basically going to ask us uh, what stuff from what part studio do we want to transfer over. Right? So you're going to click on this red button here, and it'll pop up. These are the part studios I have in this document. Um, I'm specifically, you won't have this many. I, I just you know, I copied one from someone else, and then I started making it myself. But you should have just the one other part studio. You don't need to click on all of these things. We need the curve, we need the sketches, 
and we need that plane. And I believe that's it. And if we forgot something, we can come back later and add by just going back into this derive and, and selecting it again. And, but now you'll notice we have some stuff in here. And like usual, uh, the top, the front, the, the right, the default planes are kind of annoying me. Right? So I'll take those out. Also, gonna, I can go into the derived menu and turn off the plane if I want. But this is the stuff I have. I can turn off the other things if I need to. I can always turn them back on. The curve gets turned off down here. Okay. So, first step actually uh, proceeds kind of just like we did on the last one. We are going to create the, the cone shape loft, right? So uh, just go from one sketch to the other. Uh, loft between them. That's fine. Now, what I want to do, I can turn off those sketches. I'm going to turn on the sketch three that had my crazy design in it. I'm going to put a new sketch on that bottom face, look at it from the bottom. Okay. Now, I don't want to, I can't use this sketch exactly, because if the cutout in the second piece is exactly the same size as the cutout in the first piece, they won't actually slide past each other. All right? There's, there'll be a little too much friction, it won't be very good. What we need to do is use something called an offset, and it's in your sketch toolbar, kind of near the middle, right? it's keyboard shortcut O, offset click on a sketch entity, in this case I'm referencing, I'm kind of clicking through to the sketch we transferred over in the derived, right? you'll see you have an option, do you want it to go inside or switch to outside, okay. and how, how far do you want the offset to be. Now, the default is 5 millimeters, I don't know why. We don't want it to be that big, we want it to be 0.2 millimeters. This is a very, very tiny offset. Just enough space to, to give it some wiggle room so the pieces can slide between each other. Right, nice, easy. Right, 0.2 millimeters to the inside or to the outside. We actually want it to the inside. Right. So now that I have the settings, I'm going to go ahead and click on all of my sketch elements. Right. Just the splines that I made earlier, not the circle or the lines or anything on the inside. Just make sure you get all of them. Now, I accidentally clicked off, but I can just keep clicking and just make another offset, it's fine. Okay. There you go. So, you can kind of see the difference here. The black lines represent what I just created in this new sketch. The gray lines represent the original design from the other part. That looks good to go. Okay, so one problem we have, if we're looking at this, uh, right now, it's it's pretty much carbon copy of what we had before. Right? It's going to end up making something this tall. But if we look at the finished assembly, the new part that we're making, that's the dark blue one, is taller. Right? So we got to kind of extend our cone a little bit. Okay? So, well, back here, I'm going to hit plane, so I can make a plane a little bit above the top surface of this cone. Not 25, though. I want it to be 15 millimeters. And then I can put a sketch on that plane, change my view to the top, draw a circle centered at the origin, dimension that circle to be 6 millimeters. And then there's the sketch. Right, so I have a circle above a circle. Kind of like what we did before. I'm just extending this cone. Uh, and I'll loft that circle, that circle. So this way I have a slightly taller cone. It's just extending it. The 6 was important based on the other numbers we used. It's, it's a continuous uh, curvature. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to do something similar to what we did before. If you remember the original... Um, surface, the, the cylinder surface we did through an extrusion. So I'm extruding this is sketch one. I gotta be careful. I don't want that. Sorry. You gotta be careful on which sketch one. It's actually sketch one from the derived. Right? So it's gonna look like that. It's a surface extrusion. Um, 
um, instead of blind and setting a distance, I'm going to say up to face and pick the top. Right. There we go. And essentially what we're going to do here is extend the helix the same way we extended the cone. Uh, and this is just a little bit contrived of the method that we're using to do this, but the original helix, the original curve, right, doesn't go all the way to the top. You kind of see it there. And there's no easy way to just tell it to keep going in this case. Um, so what we're going to do here, turn that off. We don't want this whole cylinder. We only really want the cylinder from this level up. Okay? So easiest way to make that happen. I know it's going to seem kind of silly, but place a plane here, put offset 15 millimeters down. Notice this right now is 15 millimeters up. I don't want that. I want it down. So I hit the arrow button. So that's down. Because even though there was kind of like a, a, a gap there, or not a gap, but a seam, right, there's nothing there. There's no surface that we can actually use. So I create a plane there. Right, and now I'm going to do something called a split. I mean, did this before where we took the tips off the top of the cone. I'm going to split. What am I going to split? I'm going to split the surface. What am I going to split it with? I'm going to split it with the plane. Okay. And now I have two surfaces. Now the lower one, I don't need. Right? I really only need the top one. I just needed that surface. And I am now going to put a helix on this surface. So I go back to my plane menu, find the helix button, click on this surface. The number of revolutions is critical here, obviously. I don't want four revolutions. I want a very specific number of revolutions. It is mathematically, I think it's, I don't remember. But it's, it's really 0.166 infinitely repeating. So you just type in a bunch of sixes, it's fine. And I don't need that surface anymore. And if I turn on the curve, right, you'll see a nice seamless transition from one curve to the next. So we've just extended the curve up so that it goes all the way to the top. All right. Okay, so now we're going to sweep, same as we did before. We're going to sweep the shape from the bottom. Remember, this is offset inward, so it's a little bit smaller. It's not exactly the same. Sweep path is the helix. Okay. Now, this is kind of important. We do not want this to be an add. We want this to be a new. Okay. And we also got to be careful, look at what that created. That actually swept uh, not the inside of my design, but the outside of my design. So I gotta go back. There we go. It should look like that. Okay. And yes, right now there are two different parts. There's a blue part, darker blue and a lighter blue part, and they're overlapping. That's fine. We'll deal with that in a second. So that's one sweep, but you notice because I used the original curve, it didn't go all the way to the top. I'm going to sweep again top of this using that extended curve. Okay. This should be an add. It doesn't know what we really want to add it to, so I want to add it to the dark blue part, right? part two. So it should come out dark blue, the same as everything else. Okay. So now I got two parts. Right? That part on the inside, and I got the uh, swirly part on the outside. I really don't want either one of these. Right? I want the like the kind of combination of the two. Right? So we're going to do a Boolean here. Boolean is a solid model tool to the right side of the toolbar. It's got three options. Union is to add two things together. Subtract is to take one thing out of another. Intersect is what we want here. We want the intersection of these two parts. Right? So we're keeping only the parts where the two things overlapped. And there we go. Remember, because we can't do exactly the same thing we did before, we gotta fill in the gaps. Right? We, don't, we don't want exactly this piece, then, then it wouldn't work. We need to go with what's inside. That's why we do the intersect. And the last thing to do is to just round over the fillet up the top here. Two millimeter radius on the fillet. There we go. Now, 
the curb's still visible. There you go. I can, there's a sketch in there that's visible. I can turn that off too. All right. If I wanted to verify that this is all good to go, this isn't a critical part of the project, but I need an assembly tab. Insert those two parts. This one. This one. I'm going to anchor one of them, fasten me, to the origin. Okay. And fasten the other one. Now this is going to be kind of important. I want to make sure they're centered. So you got to make sure your mate connector is on that point. So you might have to uh, hover your mouse and then hold the shift key, move your mouse to get the mate connector. I'll move it over the origin like that. And you might be like, okay, well, it looks pretty good. And this is where you use Onshape to tell you. You go to the assembly, you right click, you say, look for interference. And you hold your breath, and you, whew, no interferences. So inside of this assembly, nothing is touching. That's good. Okay. Now, the cool pass through fidgety motion is not going to be something we can model in Onshape. We just wanted to make sure if we put these two pieces together, they don't actually touch. And then we should be able to go ahead and print it, and that should work. All right, hope that uh, worked for you. Let me know if you have any questions.